You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast, broadcast in mid-May 2021. Today, we discuss the outdated nature of Doctor Who on Laserdisc, Betamax, and something called Video 2000. We also discuss how to care for those. Also, an outrageous offer by John Peel, of all people, a wonderful person. Anyway, that and much more, of course, including our bonus audio clip, on the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. And now, star of stage and screen, here he is singing our theme song, Fraser Hines. They all say who is Doctor Who? Where is he from? What does he do? Welcome back to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast, the podcast that explores the sometimes outdated and antiquated world of Doctor Who collecting, those who collect, and issues surrounding Doctor Who collecting, and of course, all kinds of Doctor Who merchandise. I am Larry Van Mersbergen, your host, and I've been collecting Doctor Who since 1981, and you know the story already, but I opened one of the first Doctor Who stores in Chicago, 1984, called Bundles from Britain. And we had a dealer's table at TARDIS 22 in November 1985 at the Hyatt Regency Chicago. And we were fortunate to be mentioned in a wonderful book called Red, White, and Who, the Story of Doctor Who in America. You can find Bundles from Britain on page 384. That was the name of the company. Uh, You can find a convenient link to buy this book on the front page of our website at DoctorWhoCollectors.com. We are not earning any money on that book. We just want every collector to have a copy. Speaking of links, of course, I want to remind you of two great resources for collectors. Um, First one is Timelash.com, which is a free website to keep track of your books, vinyl, and CD collection. Uh, You can log in, register for a free account, and keep track of what you have, keep track of a want list, even look up things that are out there. Um, Unfortunately, they used to have a way of connecting it to eBay, but eBay, of course, changed its logarithm, and that's not possible. But there are links to Amazon. So it's a wonderful thing. We we special thanks to Dan O'Malley, who has that site up and running. And I've worked with him on a few occasions to provide images and things that he needs for his site. If you're not sure what you have, if it's not something that's located there, then you need to go to David J. Howe's Transcendental Toy Box at DrWhoToyBox.co.uk. Of course, David Howe is a good friend of mine, and uh, he's one of the best resources for Doctor Who collectors. Of course, his great book, The uh, Transcendental Toy Box, is out of print, but you may still be able to find copies out there. Of course, if you're looking for great Doctor Who items at great prices, then look no further than DoctorWhoStore.com, and that's Alien Entertainment here in Lombard, Illinois. They have exactly what you need. You can visit our website at DoctorWhoCollectors.com to see the latest offerings from our sponsor, Forbidden Planet. Your purchases from our website through Forbidden Planet help keep this podcast on the air. Don't forget to sign up for Chicago TARDIS 2021, returning to an in-person convention this Thanksgiving weekend. Guests include uh, Colin Baker, who plays the Sixth Doctor, Simon Fisher Becker, who plays the Doria Maldivar character, and Sadie Miller, the daughter of Elizabeth Sladen, who is keeping Sarah Jane Smith alive and well in Big Finish. More to be announced. So visit ChicagoTardis.com to get your tickets. Also information on autographs and photos and all the wonderful things that go with a great Doctor Who convention. And I am very honored to be the official collecting expert for Chicago TARDIS, so stop by and talk to me and uh, see the Doctor Who collecting panel that we usually do in person. You can see some of my collection up close. And if you want to check out the collection from the virtual convention, you can visit the Chicago TARDIS YouTube channel or their Facebook page streams. And my show is one of the most popular offerings from that convention. 
Uh, our theme song, of course, is Who's Doctor Who, composed by Barry Mason and Les Reed, performed by Fraser Hines. Consider becoming a friend of our podcast, and you can support us primarily at Podbean, and uh, you can visit us at doctorwhocollectors.podbean.com. Uh, you can hear this podcast anywhere you get your podcasts, including now Stitcher Radio and Pandora. We are also a proud member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance, and you can find more great Doctor Who podcasts at doctorwhopodcastalliance.org. Also, be sure to check our eBay store for the, some rare offerings that come in, usually duplicates or promo items, and the sale of those items do help keep the podcast on the air. Uh, a couple of podcasts I want to call your attention to. Be sure to tune in to Police Box in a Junkyard, a uh, podcast where a random Doctor Who story will be discussed. I've been a guest on a few episodes, and uh, it's hosted by Eric Branson, and you will find it on SoundCloud as part of the Video Junkyard podcast family. You should also be listening to the Doctor Who Target Book Club podcast, hosted by my good friend Tony Witt along with Allison Fitch Seyfried and Dalton Hughes. Uh, they are reviewing the Target books in story order, and as of this recording, well into the Tom Baker years. Always interesting to me that they're reading them in story order. They were definitely not published in story order. Uh, I've had the honor of being a guest on several podcasts, and uh, I recently uh, loaned copies of the Doctor Who Junior books to their podcast, our Podcasts Helping Podcasts program, uh, in order to help them prepare for that podcast, since those books are not easy to find. Um, Tony's a frequent guest on our show, so in fact, any time we mention the word target book in our main story, we have to use Tony as our guest. He's our expert and provides a great insight into those target books. I'm also proud to announce that we are doing one of the very first joint podcast episodes with the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast, and the Doctor Who Target Book Club Podcast. We're going to be doing a very special Doctor Who item, which is a book that um, was published back in 1981. Uh, it is a fan-based book, but and the canon has not been fully decided on it, but it involves the fourth Doctor, and I'm not going to say any more. I don't want to spoil the surprise. But uh, they will review the book as the Target Book Club podcast, and then we will move into the Collector's podcast and discuss the collection of the original edition, uh, the reprints, and various things that have happened with that book over the years. So it should be very fun. Um, It'll join us for the first time, and we'll soon reveal what that will be about. So stay tuned to both podcasts. After the break, I will talk about today Doctor Who on Betamax, Laserdisc, and Video 2000 formats. And if you have no idea what those are, you're going to know more in just a few minutes. Um, you might have questions about that and how to protect those, uh, those tapes. So along with Collection Protection, the most outrageous offer, and our bonus audio clip... Stay tuned. I would like to invite you to take a trip across all of time and space. Join us in the police box as we discuss the worlds of Doctor Who in a completely random order. We discuss it all. TV stories, audio adventures, novels, nonfiction books, and on and on. I'm your host, Eric Branson. I would be very happy if you'd join me for the Police Box in the Junkyard podcast. The Police Box in the Junkyard podcast is a proud partner of the Video Junkyard podcast and can be found on most major podcast platforms including SoundCloud, Podcast Addict, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and Spotify. You are listening to the Doctor Who Collectors podcast. Hello fellow time travelers and welcome to the Doctor Who Target Book Club podcast, the only podcast to discuss, in story order, all the Doctor Who novelizations. My name is Tony Whip, and every two weeks or so I'm joined by a two to three person discussion panel, including our so-called expert who's been a Who fan since 1979, that would be me. We also get the views of intermediate, casual, and novice fans who either have never seen the show or who have never read these books until these podcasts, including Dalton Hughes and Allison Fitzsafried. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you find good podcasts, or even ones like ours. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Enjoy your travels. Up there is the scanner, those are the doors, that is a chair with a panda on it, sheer poetry, dear boy.
And now it's time for the main story. Today we're going to talk about unusual video platforms that Doctor Who was released on. We all are aware of VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray, but here are three formats that actually released commercially released Doctor Who stories. We start with Betamax, or Beta as it was called for short. It was a consumer-level analog recording and cassette format of magnetic tape for video, like VHS. Uh, It was later called a a VCR, or video cassette recorder. Uh, The beta machines were introduced in Japan in May of 1975, and then in the United States in November of 1979. This completely debunks a rumor that Patrick Trout and Doctor Who episodes were recorded on Betamax in the 60s. Not possible. They weren't invented yet. However, a local comic book store owner in Chicago, Larry Charette, did record The Mind of Evil in 1975 from Channel 11 in Chicago and sent his copy to the BBC, who used the color information to overlay the black and white print. It's not perfect, but at least it's in color. So beta saves the day. Uh, The lowercase Greek letter B became the logo for beta. It could be encoded for NTSC, PAL or CCAM, and let me explain that. NTSC was the North American encoding, so the signal for North America. PAL for the UK, most of Europe, and Australia, which was the encoding for them. And CCAM, S-E-C-A-M, for the Asian countries. So that's the three different encodings for video formatting. They're still prevalent today. The Betamax was officially discontinued in August of 2002, and blank tape production ended in 2016. So up until a few years ago, you could still get blank tapes. Unfortunately, Betamax could not compete with VHS. Um, They had 60% of the market, so they were really dominating. Many movies and TV shows were commercially released on beta format, and fortunately for us, Doctor Who was included. Uh, However, Doctor Who on Betamax was only released in the UK, possibly Australia, but no formatted tapes were made for the United States. Uh, Here are the titles that were released on Beta. So we start with uh, Revenge of the Cybermen in October 1983. Next, we have The Brain of Morbius, released in July 1984. Next, we have The Pyramids of Mars, released in February 1985. And next, the first, second Doctor story, The Seeds of Death, released on home video in July of 1985. Next is The Five Doctors, released in September of 1985. Uh, Then we have The Robots of Death, released in April 1986. And finally, Day of the Daleks was released in July 1986. So a total of seven titles released in the UK on the beta format. And so far in the past 60 days, I've only found one Betamax Doctor Who for sale, pricing well over $200. So I'm going to make a guess that these are very difficult to find. I have no Betamax tapes in my collection. Next, uh, of course, we have the LaserDisc home video format, uh, invented in 1963, but not patented until 1970, and then repatented again in 1990. The first time it was demonstrated was in 1972. Uh, The LaserDisc was a 12-inch silver disc, like a DVD or CD, but as large as a record, vinyl record. The first player was available for sale in 1978. And the one disadvantage uh, for LaserDisc was that you could not record programs onto the disc. The advantage, though, of her home playback was that you had greater control over the playback with fast-forward, rewind, and play at slower paces or slow motion, and no user-prohibited functions. How many times have you hit the remote on your Blu-ray and it says, Use Prohibited? That didn't exist with LaserDiscs. It was a very expensive video format system uh, that wasn't even digital in format. The video on the LaserDisc was analog, like a VHS tape, although the sound quality was slightly better. That was the only advantage. Uh, The first LaserDisc movie was released in 1978, and that was the film Jaws, and the last commercial disc was released in 2000. The very high cost of players and discs failed to reach 
a market in the United States and was discontinued. But fortunately, again for us, we did have Doctor Who titles released on Laserdisc, and this time there were titles released in the USA, as well as the UK, with even one title released in China, which is interesting. Laserdiscs were released only in NTSC and PAL formats, so CCAM was not encoded for Laserdiscs, yet we had one Chinese release, so that is a head-scratcher. I'm not sure what encoding was used in the Chinese release. I have not seen a physical copy of it. But here are the titles released in Laserdisc. The first Doctor Who title was Revenge of the Cybermen, just like the beta format, uh, in the UK, December 1983. The next one, of course, was Brain of Morbius in the UK, July 1984. And the next one was Day of the Daleks in the USA, January 1992. And, of course, the next one was also in the United States. That was The Five Doctors in August of 94. Uh, next, we had The Ark in Space, released in the UK in October 1996. And then Day of the Daleks was released in the UK in December 1996. Next, we had Doctor Who the TV Movie, with Paul McGann, released in China in January 1997. This is the only Doctor Who story released in China on Laserdisc, or any other format that I could find. And finally, we had Terror of the Zygons, released in the UK in December 1997. So we have five titles in the UK, two in the USA, and one in China. In my collection, I have both copies of Day of the Daleks in USA and UK Laserdisc editions. Uh, they are pretty uh, easy to find. Uh, you might pay about $100 or more for those. Lastly, uh, we have a very obscure video format called Video 2000, or Video Compact Cassette. It was only available in PAL encoding, so you would only find these in the UK, Europe, or Australia. So they never made it to the United States. Uh, Video 2000 was first presented at the International Radio Exhibition in Berlin in 1979. Despite having some technical innovations, uh, it was not a success, and by 1989, it was completely discontinued. It lost to VHS in the big videotape format war. As well, Beta didn't make it, or Laserdisc. Uh, this format, though, did have some advantages. It eliminated tracking control that plagued Beta and VHS. If you ever played a VHS tape and had to adjust the tracking, this was eliminated in Video 2000. The tape was autocorrect tensioned when ejected, which meant that it completely made sure the tape was ready to use for the next time you played it. It was the first format to have auto rewind on all its players, which VHS later added. Uh, instead of a leader, which was a little plastic leader on the tape, it used a magnetic strip on the tape that signaled an auto stop on the player, which was kind of innovative at the time. Uh, the machines were very expensive, and they just couldn't compete with the VHS market, so they were discontinued. However, they did release commercial videos on Video 2000 format, including Doctor Who. So these titles were only released in the UK, and only two titles were released on Video 2000. And I will use the word rare to describe these two. I don't like to use that word because it gets applied to target books in the real world, and that's not exactly true. But you had Revenge of the Cybermen in October 1983 and The Brain of Morbius in July 1984 on Video 2000. I have never seen them. I have never seen a cover. I have never seen them, but I can confirm they were released. I have um, very difficult to find. Um, I do a regular search on the uh, UK version of eBay, and I've never seen one. So, of course, by comparison, uh, and I'm not going to focus on VHS releases in this episode, I will in a future episode. VHS Doctor Who releases, here you go by the numbers. We had 146 in the UK and 138 in the United States. Also 138 in Australia, two in Brazil, two in Finland, one in France, one in Germany, one in Italy, four in Japan, one in Mexico, one in the Netherlands, two in Norway, one in Portugal, one in Spain, and one in Sweden. Uh, these editions in Beta, Laserdisc, and Video 2000 are highly collectible and very difficult to find. Uh, I would expect to pay higher prices for Beta tapes and Video 2000, 
but I have seen laser discs, and I have actually found a few as recently as this week. But you can expect to pay about $100 on up plus the overseas shipping, because more of them were produced overseas than they were here. Um, if you have any information to add on this, if you know about a release that I didn't mention that wasn't officially recorded or something that sneaked out of the market, uh, give us an email here at Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com or on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Keep collecting. Sad, Red, isn't it? People spend all that time making nice things and other people come along and break them. It's time for collection protection on the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast, and since Today we talked about Betamax, Video 2000, and Laserdiscs. Um, there's limited items out there to protect those items, but I want to talk about the ones that are available. Uh, first of all, of course, we talk a lot about Bags Unlimited Incorporated, which is one of the best places to get archival material. Uh, unfortunately, they used to have a whole line of things for Betamax, and that's kind of been you know, kind of reduced because those are outdated, antiquated methods of, of video production, as you learned in the podcast. So one of the things they do have now is brand new. It's called Box Pro uh, Betamax Cartridge and Case Protector Box, 12 mil crystal clear plastic. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a really, really nice way to store your Betamax uh, tapes. And they slide in, they stand up on their own. They're very rigid. Um, and you can get five of them for about $5.81. So that's not too bad. Um, as far as Video 2000 goes, that's a slightly different size. You might be able to fit it into a comic book bag uh, or a slightly similar size bag, but I would measure your video. If you have a Video 2000, measure the dimensions and then go to Bags Unlimited and look at those items. Uh, laser discs are actually quite easy to protect because they are the exact same shape and size as an LP vinyl record. So you can go to bagsunlimited.com and uh, go to the categories under audio and select vinyl record. And those sleeves uh, will protect the laser discs as well. I have two laser discs in the collection, as you heard, and uh, both of those are covered with uh, vinyl record bags. So that's the best way to protect these special uh, video items um, for that. So if you have a specific question regarding collection protection, something you'd like protected but don't understand where to go or what to use, Give us an email at uh, Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com, or you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. In all my travelings throughout the universe, I have battled against evil, against power mad conspirators. I should have stayed here. The oldest civilization, decadent, degenerate, and rotten to the core. Power mad conspirators, Daleks, from Tarans, Cybermen. They're still in the nursery compared to us. Ten million years of absolute power. That's what it takes to be really corrupt. And now it's time for the most outrageous offer. Today's offer uh, comes in anonymously. They ask not to be identified, which we respect. So if you have an outrageous offer you'd like to share with the podcast, just give us an email at Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, today we present a seller who lists on Abe's Books, abebooks.com, the Abe's Used Books, a great place to get your used Doctor Who books or even some new stuff. Um, however, sometimes we get one with a ridiculous price. This one comes in uh, pretty much uh, not quite at the top. We've had a million dollars before, but uh, this one's pretty interesting. First of all, it's the um, Doctor Who Gallifrey Chronicles by my good friend John Peel. Uh, great author, great guy. Uh, we've had him on the podcast before, as a matter of fact. Uh, and the Gallifrey Chronicles, um, of course, came out in 1991, published by the Carroll Publishing Group. Um, and uh, it's, it's, you know, great, great book, you know, so it's something that you can get. Um, this seller is ABC Books from Iowa City, Iowa. They've been on the program before. And every time we list, get something from them, their response to me was, oh, our auto pricing is wrong. I said, well, it's been up there for several weeks. We've, uh, I've sat on this one for a while just to see what would happen. And it's still there. But anyway, the, um, the book comes in at $2,000 with a $9.99 shipping. 
And so, of course, as uh, as we do our due diligence here to make sure that maybe, you know, is it a rare item? No, not really. Um, we've located copies of this book, uh, new, like new condition for as little as one thirty nine sixty four. Or if you're interested in a used copy, uh, there are used copies for as little as twenty dollars. So there's no need to spend two thousand dollars on a used um, copy of the book. Although this one says it's brand new, even so, a brand new copy can be had for less than um, one tenth of this book. So again, uh, and of course, I, I always look at the uh, description to see if they use um, what we call the forbidden word, and the forbidden word is rare. Uh, I just had a, uh, a, on a Facebook group, we had a discussion about the overuse of the word rare, and especially when they apply it to Target books. I'm like, really? Because there were a lot of Target books published, and I think they do that to entice you know, American sellers for the most part who aren't aware that those Target books were published and distributed in the United States uh, from the late 70s throughout the 80s. So uh, there was an American distributor and they, you know, had thousands of copies of these Target books. There's a lot of them are sitting in used bookstores. They're not rare. I'm talking rare like, um, you know, for instance, the, the one hardcover Target book that I talked about on my podcast, The Web of Fear, which was supposed to be a monthly um, Target item with a magazine and a new hardcover with a reversible dust jacket. I think only five of those were made and they were never sold. I would call that rare. That's that's how about how I apply that term. But in any case, Doctor Who's Gallifrey Chronicles, not a rare book, comes in at $2,000 plus $10 shipping. So not even free shipping for all that money. Um, again, if you see an item that is priced way too high, um, and we'll investigate, we'll take a look, we'll make sure that others can be found. Sometimes a price is what it is. I mean, I can't always uh, argue that the market sometimes drives the price, but in some cases we try to draw a line. Anyway, if you're also interested in, in uh, just another note here, if you're if you're doing uh, if you're collecting the Doctor Who classic hardcovers, on our website at DoctorWhoCollectors.com, we have a complete guide to the classic hardcovers, including W. H. Allen, Alan Wingate, Frederick Muller, and White Lion, and also the uh, Amaron Publishing from the United States. So give that a look, and thank you. Pioneer. The laser. The key to expanding the horizons of home entertainment. Integrating the pure digital audio technology of compact disc with the superior video quality and advanced features of laser disc. All formats, all sizes, one package. Surprisingly affordable. Meet the new center of your home entertainment system. Just choose your favorite music from CDs or your favorite videos from Laserdisc. Thousands of your favorites with thousands more on the way. From classical to classics. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine from blockbuster features to interactive learning. The sharpest picture. The purest sound. Bam! And the hottest entertainment to choose from. Pioneer Laserdisc. It's the best show in town.